to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it is one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Um, I'm just going to take a moment of silence today. Honestly, everybody dealing with the severe weather in the state, we hope everybody stays safe, um, including everybody in the room on their way home tonight. Just please take a moment of silence. Thank you. Um, public service announcements. I will just begin briefly stating that nomination papers are available and we have one moderator spot open, two spots for a three-year term of a Board of Selectmen, uh, one uh, Board of Assessor spot for three years, one uh, Service School Committee uh, spot for three years, two Tantasco School Committee spots for three years, one uh, Constable spot for three years, one Board of Health position for three years, one uh, Recreation Committee position for three years, uh, one Recreation Committee for one year, uh, two Zoning Board of Appeals positions for three years, uh, three library trustee positions for three years, and one library trustee position for one year. So please everybody uh, participate, get involved. Uh, we need more hands at all times. Um, and uh, with that, uh, any public service announcements, Mayor? Uh, just that it's open burning season, so people would need to call down at the fire department for a permit. Uh, Mary Dallion? No. Mary Lou? No. Oh, great, great. Uh, so moving to the uh, Cable Advisory Committee, you want to come up? I just want to say Mr. Minot has done a tremendous amount of work. His committee has been wonderful as a whole. And uh, as a chair of that committee, he's just been really phenomenal and, and it's going to make all of our lives a lot easier by doing all the legwork on this. So <laughs> thank you. I was trying to off earlier, but thank you. Thanks this is selfish. <laughs> out of the back of you because you are helping me immensely. <laughs> um, so thank you. This is Al, I'm Al Menard. For, I think I know several of you. Um, chairing the advisor, Cable Advisory Committee. Um, wanted to get before you this evening. I met, like, as Robin said, a couple times with Robin. Um, we made a lot of progress as a group, and I will say, as I shared with Robin, I think it was hard at first to try to get into this to understand really what we can do from our directive. The state has been very helpful. I've engaged with them two times myself, and then I actually invited them here. They came to a meeting in, in December to really help level set the playing ground, you know, what we need to do. Um, our current contract expires April of 2025, so there's a lot to be done over the next year. One of the things that is required as part of the state and the engagement in, in negotiating is to come before the board, right? So I, I'm going to do this probably. I, I said another meeting probably in six months, but I, I do think there's going to be some more engagement with you as we progress with some of the thoughts around the negotiations. So I'll get into that in a second. Um, so just touching on the consulting with the, the Massachusetts Department of Telecommunications and Cable, I spoke with them a couple of times. Like I said, I, I can't, they have been very helpful in really kind of talking through what towns go through and what municipalities go through in the negotiations. Unfortunately, I think one of the things that we as a group had a misconception is we could do a lot more mm -hmm. to try to negotiate with other providers. And the reality of that is, is it's a public, you know, public document that, that firms are aware of when the contract is up. If they intended to come in, they'd be here. Mm -hmm. And they are not here. To my knowledge, we have not been approached by any other provider other than Spectrum, our current provider. Um, if you look, there is a, a page, and I can share this actually with Michelle to circulate with the group. There is a page that gives you all of the contracts for the entire state. Mm -hmm. And you can actually look at the ones that the dates that most recently have been negotiated over the past couple of years. No one has been able to bring other providers in to negotiate because the cost of the infrastructure change is too high. So it is something we could, if we really felt passionate about, that that's what we wanted to pursue. But the reality is it, we most likely will not be able to change away from Spectrum because of the infrastructure, the costs associated with the infrastructure. I'll, I'll pause there on that for a second. I, I see a lot of, you're shaking your head, so I, I'm assuming you're aware and understanding of that already. Yeah. What, yes. what, what is the actual cost right now? To re-bring uh, in a new provider today, what would the cost I don't be? think we know that, right, without engaging them to ask them to put a bid in. Sure. Um, it's probably pretty significant, to be honest with you, because part of the negotiation, it's, it's the lines, the poles, the infrastructure around everything that's in place today. Um, Can I ask a question related course, to yeah, that? Sure. Yeah, no, this is, happens every time the contract comes up and people ask why can't others come in. 
What is the process, though, for us to reach out? I know our chair just asked for the cost, but what's the process? You, you said that we can do it if we wanted to. Sure. What, what's involved in that, actually? What do we do? So, we so I can tell you, right? To them or? It's me calling and reaching out to them to say, we want you to provide a, a proposal. I'd probably have to work with town council to draft a request for a proposal. Um, the reality, like I said, is a, it, it can be done. It's just it's highly unlikely because they already know, like Cox or any of the other provide Comcast or any of the other providers, they, they know our situation. Mm -hmm. they, they're privy to it, but they look at the contracts, and, and I wish I had brought it with me. There's a grid of all of the state. We, we are central to Spectrum is basically the entire central Massachusetts, with the exception of Holland. Holland can tap, is using Cox, where they're tapping in through northern Connecticut. So we could. It would mean we would have to, through town council, we would have to request to extend our current agreement for the period of time that we need to be able to negotiate and look at that and to get what you asked for is the costs and everything else. Um, it's not something you can't do, but it's highly unlikely. So they've consulted. The state has basically said, you know, you can proceed and try, but there's been no town successful in moving on with their current provider. There's a precedent. Just ask because we get a lot of resident complaints. I'll, I'll about, touch on that too. About Spectrum. Gonna, so I don't know, is it a big um, financial burden on our end to seek proposals? And then at least we can, maybe it's something the board can talk about. We can tell residents, no, it's costing X, we've tried. Because we've never really actually tried. We've it, was ten year, it was 10 years ago that you negotiated the last contract. So it's very dated. Um, you, technology has changed obviously a lot and the advent further of um, internet work from home so yes that that and i'll touch on the complaints okay, in I'm a second but we could we thought. could go to other you know we could go to cox because they're in the next town over we could go to others and say can you give us a bid but that there's the cost would be town council i mean um yeah to to for us really, be large legal to cost, negotiate but legal costs yeah. is pretty much but it. for it them off, yes. yeah for them the the millions millions in, to right. invest, invest Absolutely. into town and with what when this is probably where you're going to go um with the lessening and lessening or reduction of their services and presence. So they're going to have to put infrastructure in that's going to be outdated probably in two years. So, and, and I'll, I'll defer to Al more on that because exactly. this was something he brought up to me that I hadn't really given much thought to. So okay. it's, it's complicated. It, it's, it, I'll say it is frustrating, right? I, I, I'm sure, and that's part of one of the things I think we have to educate the public on is this process is not easy to, to go to another provider. And, and when we talk about complaints, we often, and I'll touch on that in a second, it's mostly the internet, to be honest with you, and that's where you know it's we have spectrum and inevitable because we're using it through the lines for cable. So if we were to switch to another provider, that would give you an option for another internet provider. There are internet options that are growing. Some haven't really reached Sturbridge yet. You know, some like the Verizon 5G and others. It's it just may not fully be throughout the town. So there are things that are coming that we would not be we wouldn't have control over. There's there is oversight around cable not so much around the internet portion of it so it's i'm learned a lot around unfortunately as as a subscriber right and understanding it, it's it's a complicated process and like i said if if we we're going to start to get into the heart of starting to negotiate with spectrum i will say if, if we come back and say we want to recommend at least looking at it it would be the legal cost to say we would like to be a bid from another provider that's what i thought okay. that's a long answer but no, I get it's it. complicated. Um, so part of consulting with the, the Department of Telecommunications and Cable, there are required steps that we have to do in order to move forward. Um, one, obviously, is me being here tonight. I'll be here probably a couple more times, I think, throughout the year. Um, assess the needs. We did start doing this. Um, we need to do that a little more in earnest. They gave us some guidance around what we need to do to, to talk about what our needs are um, holistically or across the town. Um, so that, those are some of the things that we're going to focus on in the next couple months. Um, I do need to schedule a meeting with Spectrum. They, they are due and are responsible to come in on an annual basis. I don't know if they've come in historically. Um, they're supposed to. Contractually, they're supposed to. So I am going to be reaching out to them. I, I think I'm, what I would like to do, and I guess this is a question, is schedule that as part of our cable advisory meeting and then invite you to join us if, you're, if you'd like to join that meeting. I don't know that it would, should take up a board of selectmen meeting initially, but I think some of the conversations when we bring them in is to at least get in front of the cable advisory committee. Is that something you think? Yeah. Because they have not, have they come in have, over the past several years? No, not, 
Yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's the, the fact that you didn't have an advisory committee really in, in play. Yeah. It, they, they contractually, they need to come in because they need to be accountable to some of the things to go back to Mary. I'll touch on in a second, the complaints. Um, we need from them, you know, the general updates of what's going on, what are they doing about technology. Part of the negotiation as we progress will be what will they be doing and what are we going to hold them accountable to, to update our own existing infrastructure. So some of those, those will be some of the negotiation points that we'll get into. Complaints. Um, one thing I, we learned, in, 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 and, I, and I shared with the advisory group, I, the world, I, I work in financial services. Unless you put something in writing, it doesn't count as a complaint. So in 2022, we had one complaint. That's, so, so if you look at social media, that's not correct, right? I, and I think that's part of that's the education of people need to understand you cannot vent on social media. You can, but it's not going to get you anywhere. And if you have a complaint about service, you've got to log it, and you have to put it in writing. One of the things that we're going to work with Spectrum is understand, is that an email, or is it a formal written process? Because in 2023, the next year, we've up to 36 complaints. But if you think about the noise that you hear, and if, you've, if you're present on social media at all, the town is pretty vocal about the concerns with issues with Spectrum. So that, that doesn't correlate exactly to what Spectrum's sharing for what the complaints they receive. 36 is very small. I mean, one is, it's laughable. <laughs> that there was only one for an entire year. So we, we need to educate the public around how, how you complain so that we can formally address that. Part of the process, too, is we are supposed to be working with them, supervision of over the complaints. That hasn't happened. So that's one of the things, even, even without the negotiation of the contract, that has to happen and be in place. Um, report to the citizens. Once we get further along and understand the path that we're probably going to go, and that's where we, once we've kind of defined the negotiation points, the progress, and where we are, that's when we would probably look to mid-summer time frame to do a public forum. We have to do one. I don't know if that necessarily, again, I'll, I'll work with Robin, if that necessarily means it's this meeting or is it a separate meeting? I think we need to define that. Um, and then obviously, I, I did put a target of coming back again in another, another six months, but thinking about this after putting this together, um, we probably will come back in the interim, something a little bit sooner, just to give you a little more progress specifically. And I think, Robin, I, I think that's where we potentially may go to exec, executive session to talk about some of the things that we specifically, I, I don't know that we would talk about the specifics around what we want to negotiate at that point. Right. We, we, we need to probably have that conversation with you. And then probably, I would say, target about three months from now. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, I, I know we have a lot of work to do and come back and give more updates. I will apologize. My one page right was a lot bigger when I looked down my laptop. <laughs> when I printed it, it came out small. I apologize for that. It's fine. Yes. Um, any questions from the board? Um, not at this time, no. No, it all makes sense. When we get into the nitty gritty of, uh, and we've been through it 10 years ago, what we want and uh, what you get. And smile apart. Well, I'm hopeful that we can change that. I, I, I do think that we have leverage. Leverage, and I will say, the open leverage that we will have is, if you look at the city of Worcester, they have not signed their contract. They're not happy with the terms of base, you know, based on the research we've done and following what they're doing. And some other towns, we can ask for an extension. We don't have to sign mm -hmm. and meet that April 2025 date. Spectrum, I'm assuming, in their best interest, is going to want to have that signed and, and executed. So we really need to determine what are the things that we are must haves and put those on the table and really negotiate from that point so, so i have a couple questions maybe thoughts one um what is worcester doing because i mean downtown worcester's internet is atrocious and it's just much worse so they if off the top of my head right we were following them because there was there were a lot of news articles about some of the concerns that they had they hired a consultant to come in to do um, an assessment they and the f the primary focus ends up being internet sure. um, cable not so much because people a lot of people are cutting ties and and actually that's a point I think I need to bring up yeah th that was my next question is the if thing. people as we're seeing and this is a, an important one I apologize I didn't put this on as a bullet point is um as people cut ties with cable the amount of money that the town gets back is going to drop. There's no money that gets paid to the town based on internet usage. So for public funding for our public access comes out of that funding, we have to be aware that that number is dropping because people are moving away from cable. So, and that's, that's all federally regulated. We have no control over that. Same thing with the pricing, right? But that's a, that's a key component around understanding setting our budget go forward for the town. 
that if if more people cut cable and go to streaming services, that's less revenue the town will receive. And you know, the question is, do we, um, are we able to, and do we, instead of the fee that something like take an equivalent fee that you pay on your cable bill in town to get this service, do we have a streaming fee? Or is there legally, can we have a streaming fee to offset that cost? So these are just, it's just a broad question right now and, and sort of not ready to be answered, I don't think, but right. just something to think about. Can we offset that with, a, you know, when you buy a streaming channel right now, you pay five ninety nine for friendly TV or whatever, you know, can you can we charge $2 a month for Sturbridge TV or whatever that same equivalent fee is that's on the cable bill for those who don't use cable but want the service? And I think that those are just things we have to look at legally with the sure. federal regulations. So the the other part of it, and it, this is so, you know, which I'm sure a lot of the complaints were ESPN being locked out of all the cable this year, and mm -hmm. all of the basically that Spectrum and all of these companies are becoming they're they're not cable companies yeah. anymore. They're becoming internet companies. Exactly. So what? And maybe and I guess the, we're probably not at the point of being able to answer this question, but I think. From a regional perspective, if Worcester's contract's open, if the other towns or any other town that's around us is open, what in, what improvements are they going to make to the region? Because although some companies are not, you know, Verizon and Comcast are di have different capital abilities and spectrum and whatever it might be. So, the, and and these markets become a lot more appetizing when you're not just dealing with. Stuff. Now, I don't know how you do that. That's a much larger, broader. It's, so the, I think the purpose of the Massachusetts the Department of Telecommunications and Cable is to set the level playing ground. Sure. The infrastructure is town by town, city by city. Sure. Right? So I, I think, unfortunately, I, I think we talked about that as a group, actually. It's one of what you're raising is, you know, can, can you leverage, like using Holland as an example? They're tied into Cox because of sure. proximity, right? We're hooked right to, we're right next door to Holland. We could. could it, can, it all goes back to what the infrastructure in the town is and the expense associated with that. I will say, you know, as one of the leading complaints around internet, and this is where we as a committee need to help kind of work through and do a bit, help navigate with, with the public is, oftentimes too, the cable, the internet issues are your own infrastructure issues in your house. And, and I think one of the things we want Spectrum to be able to do is help educate that what is it that you should have in your house to make it work at its optimal so you can have an optimal experience, right? I think a lot of times that is an issue. We do know that parts of the town are dated, too. I mean, it, you're, you're talking, there's upgrades that probably haven't town with the lines for years sure. that, are, that need to be updated as well. Yeah, the radio silence is the issue, and it's a deliberate exactly. radio silence. But a radio, that radio silence had been tacitly blessed by the state for the better part of 40, 50 years, right? But, but the same token is is the... It's not really like a collective action. It's a, when you know you have, if you tie yourself with this, the complaints of the exactly. second largest city in the state and really the region, the, the utilities, the DPU has to pay more attention to you. Yeah, and they just do. And so, and and there is and and thank you for doing this because having somebody who is um, being taking the time to build out this uh, sort of accountability net is what we're trying to, with the limited limits that we have, mm -hmm. is very important because this is probably, in post-COVID, one of our most important mm -hmm. resources, you know, if not the, yes. and economically speaking, it's probably the most important. So it's, um, so anyways, just really appreciate it, Alex. I know it's a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, I think personally speaking too, I, I work from home full time now. Right. If, if you asked me if that, I was gonna do that four years or five years ago before COVID, <laughs> no. And, and, the, and I work in financial services, that was not the norm. Sure. And, that, you know, and I think in my own neighborhood, half the people work from home, right? So it's, it's, a, it's a growing different challenge than what it was 10 years ago. So, it's, so I, I think it's, at the end of the day, we need to put out what we, we want to, what we expect to have completed and what are the things that, you know, nice to have versus what we're going to require. And we'll, we're going to put that together for you. I got one question for Sorry. sorry. Oh, go uh, ahead, yeah. Do we have, do we, do you have sufficient data from the community to what, going into this negotiation or do you need more information or survey or something like that? I do. And, and Rob has been very helpful with, I, with whenever I need information. So. No, I just meant from the community itself. I mean, from the public. Um, general public. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think you got to have to see, this is where I think this is the fall down is spectrum should have been in here on an annual basis to give 
there's a number of reports that they're due to give us that they don't give us. So what I'm going to do is tell them we need them. I need to know the dates that they're going to provide them and when we're going to get them on an annual basis so that they, should, they are supplied to you and to the Cable Advisory Committee. That hasn't happened. So I think once we do that, we can then go further into assess and working with the community to say, okay, and like Heather, for example, I talked to her about once we get, um, I think they called it a survey map. When we get a survey map from them around what the line statuses are across the town, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to sync up with Heather around what she thinks, you know, and the expectations, make sure it all comes together. Right. So that, those are some of the things that we're going to be working on. Perfect. Mary, I, I just had two, um, two thoughts, but one of them's linked to what you just said and what Jamie just said is, um, you know how you said one year they only had one complaint and social media is not the proper channel for Spectrum to know there's complaints. Um, when you go into negotiations, would it be helpful if we opened up our website and asked the community to share any concerns they have <clears throat> with their service going into negotiations if you had a you know, couple hundred and not simply, I don't think I get good service, you know, it would have to be concrete <laughs> yeah. examples of what they should have been doing with Spectrum. I don't know if that's useful or is even consistent with how they expect to get complaints. It's probably not. It's my first thought. And my second one was, does it benefit us to have a 10-year contract when things are changing so much? Or would it be more beneficial to have, say, a five-year contract? and see where we are after that. I, I will say that will be one of our key That's sort of a term of negotiation, I that, think. That will be the, the key, length. that will probably, that will be the, one of the key negotiation points. Yeah. A 10-year contract with, the, with how fast technology is changing doesn't seem it right. I, seem I, I, I don't know that I can get on board with that and push, I, I really think with the way the technology is moving, going beyond five years is, is probably not a good thing. Yes. 10 yes. years ago, you, we had no idea. Right. Well, well, as soon as you said how much technology is changing, right. I thought the term of our last contract um, isn't in sync with that and changing it, world. Exactly. Right. And then I think to tackle your complaint question, right, again, I think it goes back to education, educating the public on how to complain. Spectrum, again, is due to explain to us what have they done to resolve those complaints. And it, it's, I think it's, we have to start with them to get what, is, what are the 36 that they saw over the past year. How did they address them? And then, you know, those, I'm going to probably think that a lot of those themes consistent to what people are experiencing, beyond what you said of just terrible service, right? Part of that is also education, like I said, is in everybody's own homes, they may not be operating optimally around what kind of, what do you, what do you have for a router? What do you have to use for your own technology? You can't just finger point the spectrum. You have to understand. And that's a hard topic, too, because not everybody knows fully what they should have in their home. If you just took what they give you off the shelf, that may not be optimal if you're working from home full-time and trying to run the fastest speeds and whatever else you're doing in your home. So uh, They're going to look at the 36 and think they're doing a stellar job. So I don't, you know, 36 is nothing, really. I don't even, yeah, I, so, I mean, that's what's interesting. What if we were to put out a survey and ask people to respond and how satisfied they are with their services? And if people did respond, we'd have something to go forward with during negotiations and say, well, we did our own survey of people, and we have, you know, 250 people that gave a 3 out of 10. But on, on, I don't know. I'm I just, think it's, it's twofold, right? We can ultimately do that, but I, I think... I mean, nobody may respond. You know, people well, but they can respond to our... The formality of logging a complaint with Spectrum is not going to be through the cable advisor. Oh, no, that's not advice. what I'm saying. But, no, no, I know you're saying... But if we do a survey, I don't want to set false expectations to the public that we're taking, we, we can solve all of those problems. It's kind of a double-edged sword, right? You, you well, this would be strictly for negotiation purposes. I, to, I you think know, where the challenge, though, um, is what Al pointed out, that a lot of times people are going to complain about things. We're going to have to weed out, which we probably could, but what's their problem their, within their home versus which is Spectrum's problem? And people aren't going to sort of know the difference. So are you satisfied with Spectrum? No, I'm not. Well, maybe it's because the router and equipment you have in your home isn't appropriate. So I think it creates a... We have to think that through. Yeah, we do. We, we need to think that through. That is a topic that we, we've talked well, through a couple it times. It needs to be specific. I mean, you, you get 100 people respond and 98 is going to say, I'm not satisfied. I like my service. But right. what aren't you satisfied with? Well, and the other part of it is, is that this, a lot of these equipment is being provided by the company. 
and that most of it, particularly for lower income people, probably is. And then the and then you step further through it. You know, there's things about where to set it up in the house and all that. But the blunt reality is they know exactly where all the diagnostic information is. Yes. And that if they and so they know which complaints are real and they know which complaints aren't real. And so yes, we do need to have our people understand how to make them look at it. But fundamentally, any any failures are trackable based upon the data being pulled and, and in any which direction. And if it's going through their own modems, they know which IPN it's going to. So the so I guess as we're talking about this, one thing we might want to reach out to KP about, and I don't know what the board feels about, is making sure we ha are asking for all the right information yeah. and are doing it under letter of counsel. Because it's not fair to you to be trying to <laughs> figure out how to do a broad No, but I will tell you, program. that is where, without getting into too much detail, sure. that's where the state has guided us. So a lot of what you, you just said, right, is we can leverage them. And they've been, like I said, they've been a very helpful resource. Yeah. And without spending town's money on council quite yet, yeah. we're going to formulate around what are, what are the things that we need for assessment. Sure. Because what, part of the other thing is, is we don't want Spectrum to just come and send you a proposal. They could do that right now, and then the clock starts ticking. Sure. We don't want that right now because we want to prepare ourselves to be able to reach to them to say, OK, we, this is what we're expecting from you for the proposal. Okay, that makes so, sense. But it's still, but that doesn't just be, it's a relatively discreet use of resources to give you support right now. Okay. And we don't have to send it to them. Okay. So don't, you know, you, these, are, these are very technical issues. And to be frank, that even if the state's just, because what happens with these type of negotiations is everybody just throws up their hands like it's the federal government and the state. We could never do anything. There's no way to address it. And that's, not, and that's what they want you to believe. You're not going to get that from me. Yeah. No, no I'm not talking about you. But I'm, I'm not going to get that. Because, it's, because this, often a lot of the people that are in the state doing this stuff, they want to know too. They want to make it work better. Yep. And you have to find the right people and all that. So just, you know, I think go with the committee, do what you want. I don't want to take up more of your time unless there's well, any I appreciate others. it. Yeah. And talk to Robin about what you need, and don't be afraid to ask Absolutely. for it. And we don't have to we don't have to shoot anything off to them yet. But don't but don't you don't have to you don't have to I, recreate I, yeah. the wheel. <laughs> and I, you, I appreciate your time tonight too. And like I said, I I, I think we will be back, and I'll work with Robin. Yeah. She's trouble, but we like her. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you can usually find so, um, any other questions. From? I don't think so. No, no. not at this Thanks, time. Time. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Very good night. Now. Drive safe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right, Chief. Yes. Oh, I know. I did the color print. Mm -hmm. I mean, Michelle wanted. So good. Good evening. I'll start with October's reports. Minutes. Oh. Oh. Thanks, Chief. Um, Two thousand five, twenty-four thousand three hundred twenty-nine calls for service total. 565 um, arrests, these are for the year. So 546, I'll just go through October. 47 arrests, 2,154 calls for service. Um, 10, mutual aid requests 16 times, and mutual aid responds six times. That's the highlights of the calls. Department operations. We had the Harvest Fest that we were at during October 14th. Um, in October, the Sturbridge Police Department was recognized by the New England um, AAA for our traffic safety efforts, and we received the Gold Award again this this year in uh, in 23. And Officer Tom Hine was recognized for his traffic safety enforcement efforts, and he was recognized as traffic safety officer of the year. For training, uh, Lieutenant Bateman attended Roger Williams University of Mid-Management Command Training School in, in uh, Rhode Island. Uh, officer Ty Tula became a car seat tech. He's our Burgess Elementary School school resource officer, so we felt it was important that he become a car seat tech as well. And then um, we'll move on to the calls at the school. So a total of 18 calls, eight at Burgess, one at the junior high, which was a sex offense. Burgess was a one ambulance call, one alarm call, one administrative call, four 911 uh, trace calls. 
Uh, junior high was one sex offense. And that was uh, basically some inappropriate photos that were sent between students. Senior high, we had nine calls. Um, the first one you'll see, threats and harassment. That, that was actually, I referred to Brookfield Police because that's where the, the people lived. But we took the initial call. There was a domestic dispute at the school, but it didn't happen at the school. That actually happened in Warren. The, the victim of the domestic violence just parked in the school parking lot. They were located there. Um, assist motor vehicle, foot patrol, 911 trace, another sex offense. That was an indecent assault and battery, one student to another. Uh, ambulance call, a minor, minor motor vehicle crash in uh, section 12. For that. Any questions on October? Anything from the board? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Moving on to November. 2,325 calls for service. We had 57 arrests uh, during the month. Uh, under 18 citation. Mutual aid requested uh, again was 16, and we responded out of town one time. Department operations. Uh, we retired Velasco, our police canine, a patrol canine after nine, nine years of service. He gave us nine strong years, retired him, and we graduated. A, we got a new dog who graduated also in um, November, Rhea. She's a female lab, but it's not a dual, it's not a patrol dog like we have. This dog is not a bite dog. It's a search and rescue dog, and it's going back to school to be narcotic. So it's, it's not an apprehension dog. So we're not going to have a, a patrol bite dog that Velasco was. So What is uh, her name? Rhea. Yeah. yeah, and uh, do you not need that other kind of skill anymore, or the bite dog? Yeah, no, I just chose not to go. There's a lot of liability with the the bite dogs, and um, people getting sometimes bit by accident. And I just uh, this dog looked like something that we we could use. We got a lot of narcotics that come through on the highways, get off the highways, and the search and rescue component of it. So we just decided to go with with the uh, dual purpose dog rather than the patrol dog. Just fit, fits the department better for right now. Maybe I'll look and take another look at it down the road. But we have regional dog teams, and there's plenty of bite dogs. This dog is really specialized with its nose, so I wanted uh, a strong nose. So if someone's lost on a trail, I know we use the drone too, but that yeah. area would be yeah, helpful. And, and yeah, evidence recovery. Somebody throws, gets in, um, you know, any type of domestic. They throw a weapon or a robbery. That the, they can do evidence he can do it she can do evidence tracking people tracking the trails is big that was one of the things that we looked at um he, actually she had her first find last week at a uh, domestic <coughs> violence call that took place at one of our hotels the guy fled on foot and um our our dog working with the state police dog went after the guy i think there was a um it was he was hiding in the woods and the dog dog led him so it was a first find within not a short time of being employed by the town of Sturbridge, so she's off to a great start. I can tell you historically the narcotics dogs do very, very well on, yeah. on catching drugs. They, I've worked in departments that have had them, and they're just phenomenal. Yeah, so she, she, yeah, she, uh, state, she, she actually went to the State Police Academy. Sometimes we'll send, they'll go to either Boston or the State Police Academy, and this one went to the State Police Academy and Mass State Police trained trained the trainer, which is Officer Garrett Dana, and the dog free of charge. So it was a win-win for us. And, um, you know, the state police are in our backyard. When they all train together, they work together, and it makes for uh, a great work environment for all of us. Um, we help with the bus evacuations at the elementary school. We participated with Southbridge. We sent our Canine, a comfort canine, Rocky, over to Southbridge for touch a truck over there to help them out. Uh, in November, we worked the Home of the Brave race. Got a lot of positive feedback on that. Training. Um, that was the, the, Raya, the highlight of that was Raya graduating. <laughs> Let's see an uptick in November for the sick time. We had an officer out for a substantial amount of time for a surgery. Um, school calls, four Burgess calls, it was foot patrol, alarm, a well-being check. 
The well-being check was just a concern over a student's well-being, how they were behaving. Uh, 911 trace to junior high. We had one ambulance call. Senior high, we had a um, weapons violations, which was a, a juvenile had a, a knife on his belt. Um, we had an E911 trace, an accident, minor damage, two of them. Assist the citizen, assault and battery. Uh, one student punched another student in the face. There was no charges at the victims and their families' request. Everything was handled internally with the school. Well-being check, and that was. Um, well-being check was a wife called concerned about her husband that was riding his mountain bike up by the school. It was at the school, and he, she hadn't heard from him. So we went up and located him. There's no issues with that. Anything? Questions for November? Not for me. Anything else? No, those assaults, um, one was boy-girl, and the other was... Yeah, the sexual assault was a boy-girl. Yeah. And, girl. Yeah. and, and then the other the one was a boy-boy. Boy. Thank you. Uh, moving on to December, the final report of the year. We had 2,558 calls for service for the month of December, but we ended the year with um, 29,900, uh, no, I'm sorry, 30,201 calls for service, which put us up about 245 additional calls from, from the previous year. We had 57 arrests for December, 678 uh, total arrests for the year. 59 of them were OUIs, 23 of them were drugs. We did 504 incident reports for the year, 333 crash reports. The crash reports, I'll just highlight there, that's only the ones that we actually took reports. We probably responded to over 600, I'd say six, 650 or so motor vehicle crashes where a report wasn't necessary, but our officers were tied up at the scene, but these were actual reportable crashes. Uh, throughout the year, we issued 2,566 citations. December, we had 166 alone. Uh, we checked 6,736 residents throughout the year, 543 in December. Um, we had 111 domestic disturbance calls, 12 in December. <laughs> Uh, b and &E larcenies and thefts, we had 83, 4 in December. Mutual aid requests throughout the year, we had 146 times that we had to call for an outside police department to assist us. And we went out of town 16 times. Um, the department operations. During December, we held our annual senior holiday luncheon. At This year, we did at the Hamilton... Rod and Gun Club because uh, the senior center is under construction, so we couldn't do it there. Barbara Boydo, my uh, credit goes to her. She organizes that event every year faithful, and she does an outstanding job. Uh, and I also have to thank Village Pizza, who donates food along with Hearts, Lenny at the Hearthstone. Those two uh, businesses uh, faithfully every year donate spaghetti, meatballs, Salad, rolls, drinks, everything. Uh, so I would like to thank them. They do. If it wasn't for them, we'd have a difficult time getting that yearly dinner completed. Um, we also participated this year, uh, thanks to many donations that came into the Starbucks Police Police Department. Um, cops and kids shop shop they held at Walmart, where police officers from Sturbridge and Southbridge went down and had donations and they went with kids and helped get Christmas presents and stuff. So that was very successful. Uh, motor vehicle accidents between Walmart Plaza, there was three in December. Training, had, uh, nothing really, just normal training there. Uh, December, I, like I think Town Hall in general, we, we were hit with some pretty significant colds and flus going around for the month of December. So I had uh, some officers and dispatchers out. Burgess, uh, nine, nine calls for service in December. One was a, the investigation that was a disruptive student that we had to go over. Rocky was deployed as a common um, canine and that, uh, we assisted with that student that was going through a crisis at the time. Foot patrol, um, four over there. Ambulance calls, two, 
administration one. Uh, and then there was a minor two car crash there as well. Junior high, we had a citizen group that was a juvenile, possibly in possession of a marijuana pen. The, the school searched the juvenile and there was no marijuana pen found, so that was closed out. We did have a, a threat, a serious threat to shoot up the school. During the month of December, this was brought to our attention through FBI, who actually picked it up through uh, social media and called us in the morning saying, hey, we, we intercepted this. You may want to go check it out. We were able to find, locate the person, the Snapchat person, and um, do a thorough investigation. And that person is facing criminal charges in the school for, for posting something like that on social media. So even though it's a juvenile, we still zero tolerance for that. They're, they're going to have to go to court. We, just think that's the proper method when they're making serious threats like that. So, high school. When was that again? December. Because I don't remember being briefed on, told yeah. about that. That was at the junior that's, high. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, this was just last month. Right, it's right. So, you're couple, telling us now. I get it. No, it just yeah. took me by surprise. Yeah. yeah. A couple of weeks ago. Um, I can give you the date in a second if you want. No, that's okay. Uh, <clears throat> the senior high school. We had three motorist assists, one one nine one one and one foot patrol. And just at the end of the year, you know, I want to thank the officers, our dispatchers. They did a great job. We're, our calls continue to go up for service and the we had we had a pretty rough year. Some some officers were out for extended periods of time. We had uh, vacancies, people in the police academies, and when, when you're down and you're shorting, everybody else is stepping up to step, uh, you know, take cover those shifts and whatnot. So I want to thank them for their hard work throughout the year. They did, a, they did an excellent job, and I'm, I'm very proud of everything they've done. And that's my report. Any questions from the board? No. All right, Chief, I think that's all. Okay, thank Thanks. you. All right, Thanks, Chief. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Have a night. God bless. <laughs> Good, Good evening, evening. Chief. <laughs> Happy New Year to everyone. Yes, you too. Uh, so you have uh, from me the reports for November and December. Um, I do want to highlight a, a couple of things year end. Uh, we finished the year with 2,384 calls for service. That encompasses everything we do, but does not encompass any inspectional services. We don't count those in our, our numerical totals. Uh, of those, uh, we had 68 fires of all different types. Uh, that's one up from 2022. Uh, we had 1,609 medical calls uh, as compared to 1,521 medical calls in 2022. 2022. So um, our calls for service also continue to go up just like the police department. The difference in uh, the, the total calls uh, is made up of uh, false alarms, public assists, and other non-fire, non-emergency uh, type, type calls. So um, we do, I, I believe I mentioned this the last time I was here, I am seeing a um, consistent uh, set of incidents where we are getting uh, called for multiple calls at simultaneous times two, sometimes three, sometimes even four calls are coming in simultaneously. The reason that's important to know and, and, and quite a problem is because of our staffing level. Uh, when we have three people on duty, we can cover that first 911 call, and then I have one person left. So we have to send that person to the second call as a first responder and wait for mutual aid community to come in if it's an ambulance call. If it's a fire call, it's even bigger uh, wait time because we have to wait for uh, the fire engine to respond from another town. Four people, I can do two calls, simultaneously two ambulance calls, uh, and then I have to call for mutual aid. And in the rare occasions where we are fortunate enough to have five people working, um, I'm able to cover those two calls and still have one person to respond to a third call, be it a fire call or an ambulance call as a first responder. The, the drawback with that is they really can't do much on a fire scene by themselves. So we are, we're waiting for mutual aid. Um, 
So those are we're seeing. I'm seeing that more and more, and I don't know the reason for it. I don't know if there if there's a a, a method to you know hone down or, or narrow down why that's happening. I think it's just luck of the draw, but we are seeing it more and more. Um, for us, uh, uh, training over the last couple of months, Tower One is back in service. Uh, it was out for quite a long time due to the engine failure. Um, and I was hesitant to put it back in service prior to having uh, a representative from Greenwood Emergency Vehicles, who is the uh, dealer for that truck, come out and do an entire refresher training class for all the personnel. So that was done, completed. The truck is back in service. It's been responding to calls uh, most recently um, Saturday morning to uh, School Street for a reported electrical fire in the apartment building. Turned out to be not as significant as it sounded, uh, but the, uh, the ladder truck was able to respond to that call. Um, November, all of, the per all, of our, all of our personnel were trained on asthma recognition and treatment on the EMS side. December, uh, all the personnel uh, received training on back injury prevention. Uh, I think it's important to try and keep our people as healthy and well as possible, proper lifting techniques, et cetera, et cetera, as well as our annual bloodborne pathogen, pathogen training. These are uh, organized trainings uh, distributed by the training officer. They're in addition to the daily training that happens uh, every day and, and is done by the shift commanders. Uh, and those uh, topics vary from one end of our firefighting EMS spectrum to another, it's really what the, uh, the shift commander decides he's going to um, teach that day. So um, I would like to echo uh, Chief Desert's sentiments uh, for my people. Uh, the year end uh, came and went, and uh, the firefighters in the town of Sturbridge continue to do an unbelievable job um, they come to work every day with good attitudes and a desire to provide the best service that they possibly can provide for the people of this town. And uh, I truly appreciate it. I'm honored to be uh, represented with them, and I thank them from the bottom of my heart. So, Any questions from the board? <clears throat> no. Nice letter from Deputy Chief. What's the name? Hmm? Hulick. Like yes, that was, uh, yeah, yeah, they had a fire, uh, and we responded with an ambulance to stand by their station uh, while they were, they were busy at the fire, so. I, so I like your charts, but <clears throat> I don't totally, I like how you give us the breakdown between fire and EMS. I don't totally understand, though. So time is on, like, the x-axis, right? And then on the y, it's zero, 2.55, 7.5, 10, 12.5, like, what does that correspond to? Uh, la, 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 la. I don't. Those, uh, I'll have to get back to you, Mary, on that. Yeah, I don't. She's spending too much time in school. She's asking questions. <laughs> X-Wax exactly. is why I'm, 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 I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to make it sound somewhat intelligent when I can't <laughs> read the graph. I will, I will get back to you on that graph. Yeah, because X <laughs> equals. Because then, of, like, for example, okay, thank you. Because on November's it goes, 2.5, 7.5, yes. but then on January's it goes 0, 2.5. Oh, no, I'm sorry, it keeps going, but it's the same grid. It just goes up to 15. <laughs> I just don't know what that means. Yeah, I'll, I'll, those may be the number of calls we're doing in a day, but I will double check that and get back to you. Oh, okay. Yeah, just, just yeah, yeah, thank you. I, I will double check it and let you know. That's new, right? Or have you always been doing that? We switched, we were forced to switch to this new program about a year and a half ago now. Um, so these reports, you've probably been seeing them for about a year. Oh, wow. And I just now asked what that um, meant. Sorry. So, it's yeah. you're working with I'm grass. sharper today than I guess I have been. I don't know. Oh, oh. Well, it's kind of hard to see on the paper because it's easier on a monitor. Maybe. Uh, yeah. So. All right. Thanks, Chief. Sure. Anything else? It looked like December you had an exorbitant amount of mutual aid. Needed. December was an extremely high month for us. Uh, the, the call volume, I, I don't remember it off the top of my head, you have it, but the call volume was really through the roof in December. Because I was looking through it and I was like, wow. Yeah. And also one other thing, um, on the EMS side, 
Is everyone taking the Nero training? Uh, we are all set with Nero. We've all we've it's all done. We've okay. taken both the practical and the didactic, so everybody's good to go. Okay, good. Yeah. Just Excellent. Well, I think you're all set, Chief. Thank you. Chief, thank, thank, you. Safe. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm going to go a little out of order to get Mr. Barnsley out of here. If you want to uh, <laughs> come on up, sir. Okay. So we're going to action item B, uh, which is consideration and possible action on the appointment of Bill Barnsley to the Sturbridge Historic Commission for a term to expire November 17th of 2025. So um, we had a position open on historic i did have a few applicants and it's always a tough choice when i have a few um, but you know in some cases we have applicants who sit on multiple boards and i thought in this case it's nice mr barnes to step forward we uh, he's not a fresh face in town as we know him well for uh, another role that we don't want to publicly talk about why don't you didn't even mention but the, uh, yeah he uh, that was sad. He's, that was sad. he's very close to a wonderful being that joins us in december <laughs> Um, the north. But uh, Mr. Barnsley, um, this is something he stepped forward on. And as I said, I had a few applicants that have, are on several commissions, so it's very hard to choose sometimes. But I thought it was really great to have um, him step forward into this role and, and give this opportunity to him. Uh, clearly a part of the town in a unique way. And uh, so we look forward to having him join our historic. I think it would be a welcome addition. Um, Bill, I'm sh I don't remember exactly what it was you did, but you took a lot of time and put together some historical yes ha. yes I did yes cemetery yes I did um, if you have a moment for a little backstory about a decade ago my 10 year old nephew showed up in town to visit the grandparents I was taking care of the grandparents they were elderly and and he drove back the spooky cemetery <laughs> and he looked at me with eyes like this and says you have a spooky cemetery i go yeah yeah we do <laughs> can we go and so we went over there and i started walking him through and he's looking at some of the stones and there was a um benjamin hyde mm -hmm. joshua's dad mm -hmm. next to him is his wife her stone big letters it says dorcas hyde he goes what's a dorcas <laughs> and I go, I don't know. Let's go over to the library and talk about it as so we went to the library and come to find out they have very, at the time, very limited materials. So I started, um, I was frustrated. And, and not, not that, you know, like I didn't pound tables or anything. I said, okay, well, we can't get what we need. He went back home. <sighs> My parents passed. I went back west. I came back here a couple years later, kept driving by the cemetery, and it's just sitting there staring at me. And I said, well, there's no one else that's going to do something like that. So I just went at it, and I gathered what was available in the library, the restoration documents, a very old piece of a map, um, books that are 200 years old. And I went out there, and I sat down in front of Stone One, um, uh, Jephthah Plimpton, right up closest to the front corner near Sadie's, and uh, wrote down everything I knew about the stone photographs and then I cross-referenced that to the data and from that I wrote a book it's in the library it's also on the library's website and it's not really a book like I wrote lots of chapters I have an introduction and then the whole thing is just data you know this stone this inscription um, this is the materials made of this is the motif that's on it is it an urn and willows is it a skull um, and uh, um, and then I went through and took everybody in the cemetery and did the genealogy and ancestry of everybody. So I can walk over to almost any stone in there, pull up my stuff and say, well, this, their parents are over there, that's their sister, that's their husband's family, and uh, and do that for that. And it's all charted. He's got It's all charted. charted. Well, and there's, there's a map that's over there yeah, too. I phenomenal. created a real map. Um, and, and that was a challenge because you can't do GPS under those trees. I hate those trees. <laughs> just so you all know, they're really bad for the stones. Um, just a, a, a tidbit. Um, and it's not just falling on them. Restoration. Just, 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 just somebody just make them gone. Um, oh, no, no. no well, if we're talking about the stones. No, I know, I get it. I'm it's, it's really, really bad for the stones. Um, all the old cemeteries I go to, the ones out in sunlight, are in way better shape than ours. Sure. Um, and I go to a lot of cemeteries. It's fun. Anyway, so <laughs> I used 
Jude McDonald, many of you know her, she works with the library. I handed her a ski pole and one end of a 300 foot tape measure and made her stand down there fighting off flying attack spiders uh, while I measured from that spot to the stones and then used trigonometry to actually GPS where the stones really were because you can't do that under trees. You can't lay out a clean line. It's just kind of within 30, 40 feet ish, which isn't good enough for a map. So I did all that and then uh, just this fall, it was annoying me because um, uh, Wally Hershey asked me to uh, contribute to the, uh, um, the uh, Historical Society's page. And I decided to put together a walking tour of the old cemetery. Matter of fact, I showed you, I, I have it in this jacket. Um, this is a, an early brochure demo of, uh, of the walking tour. This is the cemetery and I made uh, 23 stops in the cemetery about you know, walking through the cemetery and I finished a, uh, a booklet that backs this up that explains why you're standing in front of that stone. And that it would really would be backed up by the original survey or the online documentation. So anyway, so to answer your question, yeah, I did the old cemetery. It's now awesome. I, keep, I keep going over to the North Cemetery and Jude hits me with a stick and says, no, you don't have time for all of that. Um, <laughs> but I think but you chose the right person for yeah, this. I, I think, I think yeah, his the, commitment to this has just been amazing. Yeah, I think the appointment is manifest, but does anybody have any other questions or do I have a motion? I'll make a motion for the recommended appointment to the Sturbridge Historic Commission. Do I have a second? Second. Great. All those in favor? Hey, welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank you, so you. Thank thank you, for, you for everything you do for this town, Bill. Yeah. Yeah. That's my just, pleasure. Such a huge contribution, and, that is. And good luck dealing yeah. with my that husband. That makes a full board now. A very good uncle that you full, took right? it to that next that step when your nephew that had a question. Be full. Well, you know, I, you know, I, uh, I, I loved you dearly. Um, but in the evening, she likes to watch sitcoms, which make my brain scream. So. <laughs> I, I, you know, so I sat on the couch next to her, and, and I did all the physical research, and I took all the pictures, and I sat on the couch next to her, and she puts on whatever, and, and I flip over my little laptop computer and go, yes, honey, of course, honey, uh-huh, uh-huh. And uh, I pound out the research, and I, I, I do trigonometry, and, and, uh, and you know, we're, we're bonding. Oh, there but it is. Well, I don't tell, think I could sit there and watch some of those sitcoms. So. I still know how to do CPR because of her. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. with that, uh, tell her I said hello. And uh, we thank you so much. And I'm going to keep mo moving on to Miss Robin now. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Bill. Okay. Bye-bye. Um, very quickly, I just want to pass along a thank you to DPW. Um, I was going to do that before we had this mess come in today. But the incredible amount of rain we have had has caused massive amounts of erosion roadway erosion we they're doing their best to get to privates to fill as the potholes which by by bylaw we do fill potholes on on privates but they're also dealing with issues on a lot of the main public roads berms that have washed out the problem is they can't do hot patch right now because of the weather so mm -hmm. some people kind of have to just be a little patient on projects that were supposed to be coming forward they will get to them, but in the short term, she's got such immediate issues of runoff and roadway uh, disintegration, frankly. And then today, you know, every time she starts to get a little ahead, we get something like this, which is pretty much now going to be 48 hours sure, of yeah. time tied up. So I just want to pass along a thank you. It's it, 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 everybody sort of has an opinion on it, and um, we talked about this today: too much salt, not enough salt, no salt. You know, too much plowing, not enough plowing, more plowing. So everybody has an opinion. They, 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 DBW does a phenomenal job. It is not an easy job. Um, so I want to say thank you. The other thing I do want to bring up to the board quickly, though, um, Heather had informed you all that she would be hiring temporary employees. We didn't officially have every one of them come in front of you mm -hmm. just because of the timing on that. I, I just want to make you aware of that and ensure that that's, that's okay with you. They're, we're treating them almost like, like a, a, a temporary seasonal kind of a situation. But in some cases, it's drivers going into our trucks. It's our equipment. It's not necessarily just vendors. But at the last minute, if she needs bodies, we just kind of need approval from you to allow me to put them on the temporary payroll. They're not long-term employees. Any questions, concerns? I have no problem with that. Our trucks are insured and whatnot, so we're ensuring yeah, that yeah. that's all fine. They all have to 
you know, be because licensed. they're seasonal, you won't have to lay them off, right? Because they're only no. Well, it doesn't impact our unemployment. It's hard because we can't 1099 them because they're driving our equipment. Sure. So we have to be a little careful of the unemployment thing, but they wouldn't be an official layoff. We're not really classifying them that way. It's as a sort of per needed, like a part time as needed. Yeah, as long as it's covered by insurance, I see no issue. Um, yeah. You need right. or you fine I'm fine as long as you all don't have yeah. an issue. It's that borderline of what counts is what I have to put in front of you. And if you're comfortable with that, that doesn't count. Great. <laughs> Great. Thank you. It doesn't count. Uh, very quickly, town meeting Monday night, Burgess Elementary School. Just a reminder, it is at Burgess. Great. So, so everybody remembers that. HVAC update. Um, I did, I, I sort of have to ask for a, a, per, a forgiveness instead of permission. We needed to do some extra cleanup beyond what we'd originally anticipated. Becky was concerned. Uh, about having anybody back in the library without some cleanup on some insulation and whatnot. Uh, it was more than what the HVAC company itself would do, and we had to bring in an outside company. We're fine on the procurement end, but normally we put contracts in front of you before I sign them. Um, in this case, I needed to get them going just so we could get the library back and operational. So a mea culpa on my part or, 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 a, or a forgiveness instead of permission, but I put my John Hancock on that one because we just kind of needed to get it going. So. Um, I don't know if you want to take a vote to ratify the action so that it's an of officially been done. Um, yeah, we probably should. I think that's probably. I mean, Does anybody have any strong opinions to the contrary? Okay. Um, do we have a motion? And this is the bill for property restoration. Yes. Yep. Do we do we have a motion? To, I guess it would have to be. What's the amount? Thirty-two thousand eight hundred eleven mm -hmm. dollars. Yep. Um, I honestly motion. <laughs> so, so, oh. Yeah, I've got so, so moved. <laughs> Second. All those in favor. <laughs> Great. I mean, and uh, I will be the, discussing the total bill. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh -huh. they have been working there. <laughs> I will be talking to today. the company to see if there is any offset on a bit of that cost. Mm. Uh, but we're looking with the change orders were how much we had left from the ARPA funding. I may have to do a little bit of facility funding on it over and above, but I, I can't have insulation on books well, I guess for it, children. But it does seem to be the, the, to Mary's point, and I, I would mm -hmm. do some, a little stronger pushback because somebody put the, somebody was uninstalling uncleanly mm -hmm. insulation got on the books, period. Mm -hmm. Right, like it's just how's that happening otherwise? Yeah. You're not tarping. Yeah. You're not, and I understand that. If if you're not, if you are, because I'm assuming it's fiberglass yes. insulation. So if you're re remediating so poorly on fiberglass mm -hmm. insulation that you're not. Yeah, no, I'm not talking just the insulation. I'm saying oh, the whole you know, project. Yeah. The, the whole, whole project. project. Yeah, HVAC HVAC it's, projects are absolutely. Oh yeah. Oh no no. Control. Yeah. But this is, but I, I guess I'm missing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> but, I'm, but I strongly so disagree. on your page, Jamie. No, that's, that's this a lot of money on, on, yeah. that's, this sounds, this strikes me as somebody's doing something shoddy because I don't understand how you don't expect to cut into a wall and get insulation. There's a lot of debate as to what the definition of occupied construction was on this project. Well, and there's, we were, nobody was in the building. But at that, the books at that point. were considered occupied, and that's so we're having a little discussion. Yeah, so so, so is the chair, but the the, the yeah. blunt reality is is that you can tarp, that's, you can tarp, you can yes. tarp, you can tarp. Yes. Just, I mean, that's what plastic is for. Yeah. Anyways, I mean. So it's a discussion. It's an ongoing. No, it's an ongoing okay. discussion. Thank you. <laughs> uh, a little bit, just briefly, is there are the governor did uh, put forward some cuts to offset some of the. Um, shortfalls she's seeing in revenue and we are going to see some of those in our earmark grants um, so right now we just got an email today that earmarks got cut 50 percent some of that like the senior center furniture grant was 50,000 that's now down to 25 that's not necessarily final but right now they're asking us to revise our uh, requests to adapt to these 50 percent cuts on earmark grants uh, we are, this is all happening as we speak, so I, I can't provide much more information than that, but I want you to know we are working with, stay in touch with the Representative Smola, Senator Fatman, because they were involved in these earmarks, and they obviously know that we're not, no, no local communities are pleased with this, and as a group, the small town administrators are talking about this because it impacts small towns tremendously. Um, and then finally, just a retail, uh, uh, an update on marijuana retail. I don't want to get too much into it because there could be some executive session things if there are legalities and nuances. But the new legislate, the new, the uh, new uh, cannabis commission has basically uh, a lot of things fall in favor of the marijuana retailers versus the communities. 
Uh, the impact fee question is uh, far more challenging than it was before. We cannot charge an HCA fee just to have an HCA. They used to be sort of the, you could charge for that. That's off the table. We have moved to waive fees for any incoming if we were to have a new licensee come in, so we're okay on the equity and diversity aspect of it. But I do think at some point we're going to need to look to see if it's even worth the effort to have an HCA when realistically, unless we were to see dramatic impact fees that we can very, very clearly document as we go forward. We had impact fees initially when we were setting it up. There were legal fees, there were assessment fee issues, planning, all of those things. But as we go forward, um, there may not be much impact fee going forward, and it may just be logical at this point, and we need to think about this, are we going to have these agreements at all, or are they simply going to operate like a regular retailer and we get the state revenue reimbursement? So I just want you to know I'm sort of working my way through that. I may at some point, if we have to have an executive session, if we're dealing with where we are with the current contracts and what we're going to do with those, I may have um, Nicole from KP virtual in, because it is extremely complicated what the Cannabis Commission mm -hmm. is doing. And it, it's harder for me, it's, it's really hard for me to translate all that to you. I sat in for on an hour and 45 minute session on this with her that she presented to a group of town administrators and we we're all uh, scratching our head a bit. So uh, I just want to give you an update on that. And I believe, is that it? Uh, oh, and you have the year end meals uh, tax. So uh, very good numbers as you can see. We had rebounded on the rooms. We had not rebounded on the meals last year more than anything because there was a lack of help. So restaurants were not able to stay open. Uh, it looks like things were are trending a bit better for 23. So those numbers came in from Terry. I want to thank him for his uh, his efforts on that. So, okay. Robin, are these um, totals? Is that our share, or is that the total? That that's the the, the total. total. Yeah, state. yeah, that's the total, and then we get a percentage. Yeah. That's the total that we've earned, and we'll get a percentage back of it. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, but I yeah, yeah. No, I wish we were getting that. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be a very relaxed town administrator if we were seeing that kind of age I'd love years. 21 million to come into the hotels. All right. And that, that is it for me. Great. All right. So action items. Um, I, let's just see if we can get through these relatively quickly so Robin get on the road in this weather. Um, so we are action item A, consideration and possible action to accept the resignation of Kathy Peterson from the Storage Sturbridge Historic Commission. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Thank you to her for her service. Um, and then we're moving to action item C, consideration and possible action on the appointment of Dina Sexton to the Sturbridge Open Space Committee, term to expire June 30th, 2025. So moved. Uh, second? Second. All those in favor? The ayes have it. Consideration and possible action on the hiring of temporary plow driver, Cal Jer Jalbert, ratifying this action. Yeah. That's one of these that I put him on until I could get support from you that we didn't need to do it. So. Okay, okay. So you, you need a... So you could just vote it if you want, yeah. but then... Yeah, so uh, moved. And then going forward, All I right. have to. Do you have a second? Second. All those in favor? Great. Um... Consideration and possible action to reappoint uh, Larry Morrison to the Service Personnel Committee. So moved. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? <laughs> All right. Consideration and possible action to accept the generous donation from Mary Del Dorian uh, to uh, Sturbridge to the Sturbridge Police Department in the amount of five hundred dollars. So moved. Do I have a second. Second. All those in will, favor? We will send a note. Um, yes. Rather than the normal go around, does anybody have any old business? Um, wait, did, you, did we do the um, application for the hawker and pedal peddlers? Oh, did I skip it? Yeah, yeah they weren't here though. He's not here. So. Yeah. Oh, I skipped it accidentally, but yeah. presciently. Um, thanks, thanks, Mary Lou. Um, do we have any? Um, anybody have any old business? No. Just on the um, new hours. Are those going to be posted? I did put those on Facebook. We will post those on the oh, website as well. Yep. I missed them on Facebook. Yeah, I put them on my page. I don't know if you can. You shared it, I, I shared think. So we will, we'll we'll make, make sure we keep, we'll post that a few more times before February 5th. Perfect. Yep. Any other old no, business? Mary? Uh, new business. Mary Blanchard, do you have any? None. Right on. Um, so what's the latest on the sign getting erected, the welcome to Sturbridge so sign? So the footings are in, I saw and that, that was last week. Um, we have to, in fact, uh, we've got to get the invoice. 
he was asking for the update on the status of the last invoices that he submitted. So we do need to check on that. But he's moving, weather has basically now been the stall because after he put the footings in the next day, we had a couple inches wet, 12 inches of snow. So, but it's, 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 the, it's still moving. Okay. Just, yeah, just weather now. All right, uh, Mary Lou, anything? No. And I have nothing. Okay, then we are, any correspondence? I don't think I saw that any. email that I gave you guys extra. Uh, the... The, the, we do have correspondence from the boys, boys, the oh, yeah, all yeah. girls. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hmm? Um, okay. All right, so recognizing that. She would like to know if anybody she can like, attend. Yeah. Good job, Jamie. I thought, wait, I thought it was her job. Nope. Oh, job. correspondence. All right. This is, we have any? Oh, usually. Oh, oh no, no. I meant no, to go. No, to attend. I, I can, oh, okay. she I'll can read, read the, the notice. notice. Ah, she's supposed to read the notice. Oh, I so, so we've got an uh, email from the troop leader oh, of 163, which it is an all girls Boy Scout troop. Her five year anniversary, welcoming anybody able to attend. I will add it to my calendar as directed. <laughs> Some things are more fun than another. Oh, that's yeah. true. Ribbon cutting One to day restaurants. We may have a little good women. Yeah, no, it's, it's something like that. We got enough little good wins around town. Uh, the, uh, another one. So, anyways, all right, then we have uh, minutes. We are going to begin, so whichever one I find can I, first. Can I just say one thing about minutes? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> I really appreciate getting the backlog, and Michelle, I know you're crazy busy, and you did all the licenses, so it's, it's, it's really not a criticism for, of, of you by any means. But I have a hard time when they, like, when they're so far behind, and again, this, it's happened with other admins too. I, I don't really know how to correct it, but when we're asked to like look it over and then approve minutes and they're six months yes. or a year old, I, I just, I'm just relying 100% on the fact that they're accurate because I can't remember who made the motion. So once and we, so, yes. so you know, maybe we, if it, in the new year. Us get them back they're not no no i get it and i know the goal is to get them done this year I, so i so when we approve it's just going to be me you know really relying on the fact that you listen to the tape I do. I go to and you know because it's if at all on like tuesday if we can try to have it because i can remember two weeks back and i can remember a month back but and we've run into this problem before and it's just so we need yeah. to catch up on the backlog and then from there we really need to start making the effort with all of our boards and commissions there's a there are there are legal re yeah. requirements i understand and so absolutely once we get michelle and, caught up right then at that point this board but i need to emphasize this to all of our boards and commissions that it is critical that minutes are done within so many days of the next meeting. You at least need the motion. Yeah. And so I think it's really important. You're bringing up a really good point. Yeah. So no, like I said, I just back no, on. And I yeah, trust we'll you that it's really accurate. It's a and then the other thing is I'm glad that we have all these. In the years past, we aired, and Mary will remember this, on making it like a stenographic record onto prior boards. Remember, it was ridiculous. Okay, we had every possible, and that is uncalled for but and i know we're just catching up but maybe if we can flesh out a little because now these are literally just the motion and who did it just the motion with no discussion of so if somebody looked at it they would think the board didn't even like discuss this before they voted on it so once we're caught up if we could just maybe have a little bit of the discussion that we that took place that and then hopefully it doesn't go to what no it no it used to be ridiculous but also now, if it's just motion, 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 if someone said, well, did the board even discuss this right. before they reached there? Did they deliberate at all? And we don't have like- yeah. Or even a sentence saying that after- The board deliberated just, yeah. something. Yeah, yeah okay. okay. Then putting, they would know to look to a tape. The, um, yeah, the they, link they, right. as well on there. So that that's helpful. Knows that, Cause I, yeah. I don't have a lot of that. Right, no, that's helpful. helpful. <laughs> okay, so with that, um, the February 21st, 2023 is the first one. Uh, 
really was just me, Mary, and Chase that evening. So maybe we should hold those till Chase is here in yeah. case he has any comments. Okay. Um, is everybody fine with that? Okay. Um, so then we can move to April 24th, 2023. Same thing. It's same the same thing. issue. Okay. You know what? We, we can hold, but can I just give my comment? Because oh, maybe sure, if you come back, you can, because we're going to vote on it when um, Chase is here. On page 139, it just says, um, Town Administrator Grin stated Article 7 has been vetted through the community preservation. That's all clear with state regulations. And that the 1.7 million in requests complied under historic. What, is, what does that mean? That's all. I just... The one min one the seven million request. in requests. Which paragraph? I um, it's it's right. That was the list. senior center, and it had to qualify for CPC, I believe, under oh, historic okay. renovation. Historic. Okay, it, it yeah. qualified right. as historic renovation as historic. under the yeah. CPC. Right, right, right. right. Just because I didn't. Yep. Okay. So we'll hold that one as well. Okay. Um, we are also moving to June twentieth, twenty twenty-three. All right. Yeah, that <laughs> yes, I know. This is when I had my yeah, legs so. done. <laughs> um, all right. Mary, 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 Mary Deckling, any comments? Yeah, there's one on page 146. It's under Q, it just says consideration impossible. Maybe we need to put action. Oh, okay. 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 Anything else? And we're holding on that one too for the same reason. No, that no. Was, no. Oh, I'm sorry, Mary Lou was there. I apologize. Yeah, you three people can vote. Yes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of June 20, 2023. No, I'll second. All those Pending, in favor. Pending, yeah. yeah. And uh, I abstain. Yep. Yeah, three in favor, one abstention. Moving to July 3rd, 2023. Any comments? Nope, I had none. okay with it. Okay, down. I was absent. What's that? What'd you say, Mary? I was absent, so. Uh, oh, okay, that makes it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, all right, uh, do we have a motion, Mary Lou? I'll make a motion to accept the July 3rd, 2023. Um, As written. Do <laughs> <laughs> I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Great. And I'm at, I'm at abstention. One abstention. All right, and then we are to the August 7th, 2023. I had one question. Mm -hmm. I mean, probably won't be able to answer tonight. Did we already approve the August 21st, two weeks later? Um, because the reason I ask is this was the one about um, dish. the dish. And I remember the board agreed that the town administrator was authorized to move forward on a license agreement. And I believe, and I don't know if it was this meeting or the following one, I asked for KP's something in writing because I thought there's a policy consideration, not just, so I wanted to know what their thoughts were because they made I this. I think, yeah, I think I forwarded you an email. I'm not sure we ever brought it back to the board. Oh, the 21st was approved though. Yeah. Oh, it was. Did, did, is that where I referenced the policy consideration? I just wanted it somewhere that I had asked. This makes it look like we were all on board that, you know, the board agreed that the town administrator was authorized to move forward on a license agreement. Yeah, and at one of the meetings, I wanted so I ask if there's a policy. on a license, but maybe it should be changed to negotiation. Yeah, I think what, I think the proper framing was not that Robin had an uh, absolute green light to just go on it, was that she, we said, yeah, it makes sense to engage with them, see what's going on, and then from there, we'll come back. Uh, we'll come back yeah. So maybe on page 154, we want to change the board agreed that the town administrator was authorized to move forward on, on a discussion, agreement. right? Yeah. On a discussion and regarding. Yeah. And I just maybe it was in the following two weeks that I said, "What about the policy consideration?" And um, so I don't remember if I said it in this meeting anymore. It probably was this meeting. I'm pretty sure this. Yes, yeah, so I'd like something. It's, it sounds um, like it was that meeting. I'd, I'd like something in there. I'll listen to it again. Yeah. M. Dowling, Rick. 
questions whether there is a policy consideration underlying the negotiations and not just yep. within the power of the town administrator under the charter or words to that effect. Be good. Well, you can rent. I technically, I and mean, that was the decision from KP that I can, I can actually have the authority to license it. Not that I would, yeah. <laughs> but that yeah, no, the, it's the, right yeah, the KP did, and I think I thought I forwarded that to you. You may have. I just wanted something email, in, the, yeah. in the charter too. Right. It's pretty. It is actually. KP said it was very clear, but I mean, obviously, I also can abdicate that, if you will, yeah. to the board, which I would on something like that. And but are we lease? But then the ultimate signature has to come from the board. Oh, though, not if it's a lease. license. Well, no, not that kind of a license, believe it or not. And I asked KP about that. That's a separate type of licensing. Well, it's not like licensing a business. Can you can you uh, re-provide Mary the? the I will. The, the yeah. I mean, we're not doing it that way, but yes, yeah. we're doing a license, but one that the board would approve. I'm choosing to put it to the board. Okay, so so yes. now it is different. It yes, I am. Well, no, it was going to be then too. No, no, I get it. But now that you're putting it before the board, it's still going to be a license. But it's still going to be a license. But if we have to sign it. Now there's a policy consideration. No, are we are we just required to I, sign it? I don't even know that you would sign it or vote to just authorize I, I me to enter I, it. I think what my recollection on it is is that the email stated that it was a licensure. Consequently, uh, Robin could uh, engage in that way if she wanted to. And I think Robin's point now is that even if she could do that, she's not going to do I that. I get it. Because, yeah. right. But it wouldn't be that you would have to sign it. It would be what I would be asking you for is a vote for you to authorize me to sign it. So there wouldn't be a policy change per se that puts a weird kink in the charter. It would keep. It wouldn't go against the charter. But I am simply looking to you to support my signature on that license. Is what I will do. Okay. But you could deny. Yeah, well, let's we'll take it yeah. take it as it comes. But the because this is the minutes about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to reference somewhere, and I don't yeah. remember what. No, you're right. Was, I think it was just me eating them all because I think this is the first time it was me eating. We, we, and we that's can, when we we can amend. Do you want to just vote it as amend is amended and will amend it? Do you want to yeah. review it? Um, I think you can look at the tape and probably. Or, or if you I'm gonna listen to it again, let me just listen to it again. Don't vote and then we'll put it back up. Okay, put it on hold then. Yeah. But at a minimum, I agree with Jamie. It should seat to be forward on a light on negotiation. Yeah, that that's easy agreement. enough to clear. Yeah. Because this makes it look like it's not coming before us again. No, you don't approve any license. Yeah. Just I know, simply, but I'm just yeah, saying the absolutely, word is this. absolutely. Yep. All right. And so with that, I don't think we have any Motion. community forum. Hey, calm down, calm down. <laughs> um, don't rush it. All right, do I have a motion? <laughs> a motion to adjourn. I will second it. <laughs> Drive safely, everybody. Yeah, yes. everybody get home. Especially.